Miss Alexa, now can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, so I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Okay, Mr. Steven, can you hear me, please? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi. Still yeah, can't can hear, hear you. But, uh, it seems you cannot hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, it's fine now. I can hear okay. you now. Yes, okay. please. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So guys, please, if you can't hear me, please give me a hi in the chat session. Mr. Steven, can you hear me, please? Okay. Right. So please, let's watch the videos as we wait for the others to join. Right. We want to give about 15 minutes for us to have a bigger house. Thanks for joining, Mr. Magnus. You're welcome. So we want to make room for a number of people to join. So we we'll use about the first 15 minutes to play introduction, uh, introductory videos for what the program is all about. So let's enjoy. Okay. The Young African Leaders Initiative is a project initiated by the United States of America government to invest in the next generation of African leaders by providing leadership training for the youth. The program was launched in 2010 to support young African leaders as they spare growth and prosperity, strengthen democratic governance, and enhance peace and security across Africa. The Accra Regional Leadership Center, located within the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, coordinates the preparation and implementation of the training program. Some of the participants have shared their expectations with regard change Yali brought in their lives. My name is Panama Lobi. I'm from Liberia, and my track is the Business and Entrepreneurship track. Coming to Yali, I had no idea about business or entrepreneurship, even though I had started something in my country. My goal was to come, learn, interact, and network with fellow uh, Yalians that I've done. And I believe that it has, this has caused a lot of impact on my life. And going back to my country, I'm planning to use these skills that I've acquired to make a difference in my field of studies and in my country, which will be able to impact the rest of Africa. Thank you so much. I am Aisha Saho from the Gambia, doing this business and entrepreneurship track on the Yali program. This whole program has been really transforming for me. I have been able to recognize the fact that change begins with me. I need to start within to start winning. And I'm so looking forward to making an impact in my own social society to be able to contribute to the social economic development in my country and Africa at large. Thank you so very much. My name is Lilian Lankwitete from Ghana. I was part of the civic leadership track. Being part of the YALI program has been life motivational. It has challenged me to drive change when I go back to my community. I've been inspired to do so much more. Meeting so many people and gathering all these experiences would motivate me and push me to the next level in my career. So Africa's future is really well defined now because with a program like the YALI, we actually know where the future of Africa will be. Now it's your choice as an alumni, as a participant, as a member of the network, to make sure that you're part of that future. The future is already clear. 
We are going to transform this continent. We're going to change the leadership in politics. We're going to change the leadership in civil society. And we're already changing the leadership in business. But what role do you want to play in that future? What history, what will history write about you and the work that you did to shape the future of Africa? That's the challenge I want to give you. Enjoy this experience and make sure that it shapes your future in a way that you can also shape the future of Africa. Okay, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. You're all welcome. It's a pleasure for us all to meet today. Right. I want to... First of all, introduce myself, introduce our guest for the day, introduce the program lineup, and then afterwards, we introduce ourselves, all of us, one after the other, and tell everybody what we do. And then from there, we can start the actual presentation. Is that okay, please? All right. If it's fine, please give me a thumbs up. You can see me. If you can all hear me, please let me. Get a wave. Okay. A wave would do. Right. Good. Sorry, Harry, please let me check one thing before we start. Right. So please note that the program is being recorded for future purposes. So thereafter, I want to have it uploaded so that if you want to go back and replay, you can do that. Before then, I have a number of links to Yali's pages and programs and relevant resources that pertain to the topic we are treating today. So the links are in the chat section. So kindly take a look and then you can follow. There are also workbooks for today's topic, so that if you're an entrepreneur and you need help in structuring your business, do the work with a step-by-step -step approach just that are being laid out. So you can follow and then you're able to create your business models, your business plans, streamline your business and all other, some other resources that are very useful. So every topic, it's a course. So every topic in itself has got its own course books. So, or workbooks that are very helpful to us as entrepreneurs. Right. So we start the, name, the program in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Right. For today's program, my name is Dorothy Cha, and I'm your facilitator. And for our guest, we have Mr. Stephen Aite Kweku Jr. who will join us very soon. And then we have Mr. Alexander Lai. He's live with us. Mr. Alex, could you please give us a wave? I'm right here. Hello. Great. So Mr. Alex is the CEO, the MD of Global Information Technology, sorry, of Namilex Africa. And he is a global information and technology expert. And Mr. Stephen is the area sales manager of Oriflame Ghana. Right. To start with, my name is Dorothy Cha, as I said earlier. I have a background in international trade. I'm into media, I'm an artist as well. I love entrepreneurship. For me, I believe it's the way, because I believe each one of us is gifted in our own ways. And as young people in Africa, I believe that their continent is endowed with so many opportunities and it's important that we position ourselves in a way that we get to benefit from what the continent has to offer. Unfortunately for us, Africa is blessed with a lot of young people and it's projected that in some few years to come, a huge part of the global population, young people's population will come from Africa. So that means, that, and coupled with the natural resources we have, the continent is estimated to grow or to be a hub for economic growth and prosperity in the future. So as young people, I believe that if we start from now and position ourselves properly, we stand to gain a lot. And the, the future of the continent is definitely very bright. Right. So I'd encourage all of us to take a look at Yali. Yali is the... It's an initiative of the United States of America. 
I came across it. I was looking for some fellowship opportunities, and then I came across Yali uh, a few years ago. I signed up to be a member, and every now and then they send materials that are very relevant, courses and all that. So I decided to sign up for the courses. I signed up for one, which I earned a certificate for, and it's been very, it's been great. I've learned a lot. Some of the things we learned in school in our MBA class. I've had a chance to learn more and it is, I've been inspired definitely to take the initiative to share my knowledge or impact other people and show other people the way so that we together we can all build the skills that we need to start making a change in Africa. So, out. So when we uh before or let's say after the show, please let us take a look at the links and then look through the number of courses. So whichever course you are interested in, you can take and then you can earn a certificate. Then you can also go ahead and be able to host your own events. That's the whole path. It's for you to be trained and then you go out there to also make an impact. So the courses are structured in such a way that if you want to be in entrepreneurship, you want to be in leadership, you want to be in um, public policy uh, or management related programs, you, are, you have something that works for you. So you decide, right? So that is Yali Ghana. That is Yali Projects for us. Thank you. So before we go on out, once you have Mr. Alexander introduce himself, and then we can take it up. So, Mr. Alex, you have the floor. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome you to, to the program. As the, the host has already described in the details, my name is uh, Alexander Lai. I'm a, a information technology expert and then MD for Namilex uh, Africa. So, she has further introduced um, the program to you, as Yali, and we are here today to um, share knowledge uh, and do discussions on what we are going to bring together to empower minds for African youth. And it's all about um, entrepreneurship. And as she has already mentioned, entrepreneurship has always been the way forward in, in tapping on top minds and creating the opportunities for, for the youth of Africa. So as I mentioned, my name is Lai Alexander. Let me leave it for the host to uh, continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, it's good to have you. So before we proceed, we would like to use the next eight minutes to introduce ourselves. So I've introduced myself, what I do. Mr. Alex has also done the same. But please, um, if you are ready, any of our guests, if you're ready to speak, please unmute yourself and let's have you on the floor. So we'll all introduce ourselves. No hiding, please. Right. Please up, please. Don't worry, you can speak in audio. You don't have to show your face in the video, that's fine. We have 12 people in the house. Hello. Uh, can they hear you? That's what I'm not sure. Okay. Dickman. Dickman. Hello. Yeah, I, I can hear you perfectly. So. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, please, if you can hear me. I would want the audience, one person to have the floor to introduce themselves. So please, if you're ready. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Who do we have? Akosia. Yes. Great. It's good to have you. Good to be here too. Thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Right, so kindly introduce yourself, tell us what you do, 
and all of that. That's fine. My name is Akusha Phillips. I'm a women's designer. Okay. And just a woman, yeah. Okay. So what kind of clothing do you design? I'm best with a woman. It depends okay. on what she wants. Very oh. particular. So. That's interesting. So yeah. are you are you based in Accra? Yes, mostly Oh, that's nice. So if you can share your social media handle or contacts, anything we can follow you, we can check you out after the event. Sure, I'll send it to the chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Right. That's great. Hi, Hi there. Hello. Who do we have? So, guys, let's give it up for Miss Akusia. She said she's a woman clothing designer based in Accra, East Legon. That's good to have her. So, guys, please let's help somebody else we are all introducing ourselves so at the end of the day we are not strangers and then we, this is an opportunity to also network and sell yourself so please let's take it up and we'll get it, things moving sorry right, don't be shy hello hi there tasha hi tasha hello yeah, it's good to have you. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. What's up? Tasha. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hi. hear you. Okay, hi. So my name is Dr. Nate. I'm a GP in the UK. Okay. That's nice. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, so I'm not supposed to I've so introduce myself. I live in the UK. I'm a doctor. I work as a family practitioner with um, interest in women's health and sexual health. That's nice. Wow, that's awesome. So um, you're based in the UK, I guess. Yes, I'm based in the UK, but I come to Ghana once or twice a year. Okay, so are you currently in Ghana? Am I? In Ghana at the moment. No, I'm in the UK. I joined my cousin's Alex, so I joined to listen to what you're doing today. Oh, that's awesome. It's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. So please, can you put up your social media handle or anything we can connect with you? Please. Cool, I will do that. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'll put, I'll put down my email. I'm not really on social media much, so I'll put on my email. That's fine. That's great. All right, cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great. Who do we have next, please? Okay, hello. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm Magnus. Hi, Mr. Magnus. Thanks for joining. You're welcome. Uh, I'm with the Postal and Courier Services Regulatory Commission. We regulate the postal and the courier sector in Ghana. So, yes, so that's what I do. Great. Wow. Mm. So, uh, can you tell us a bit about what you do on a normal okay. What do you do? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, any uh, with the laws of Ghana, anybody who wants to do delivery mm-hmm. needs to have a license. Mm-hmm. A license. So that's what I do. I ensure that everybody gets a license. It's yeah. a government institution. Yeah. So, like a regulator, we regulate the sector. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your know, interest in entrepreneurship, please. Okay. So uh, I'm a, also a part-time farmer. It's not been that great, but yeah. we, we hope things will change. Definitely. Yeah. You know, a lot goes into farming. There's a lot of risk. But at the end yes. of the day, yes. you definitely then. So yes. we are so happy to have you. Thank right. you. Is, is there any way we can connect with you? Sorry? Is there any way we can connect with you after the event? Yes, I'll, yes, I'll put in my email address. I'm not really a social media person, so okay. I'll put in my email address. So do I put it at the comment section or the yes. chat room? Yeah. Oh. In the comments, whichever one you're comfortable with. 
That's it. Okay. All right. So I'll put up my email address and then that you can contact me anytime. That's fine. So um, I guess I'll put up my email as well so that anybody wants to reach out, we we'll would be glad to have your details so that subsequent events we can um, contact you or let you give you an update. I think that would do, right? All right. That would be, be great. Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll do so now. So guys, right. please. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Magnus. All right. Please, hello. hello. Yes, uh, good evening. My name is Gabriel Ofori. My name good is Gabriel Ofori. Good evening, Mr. Gabriel. Thank you for joining. Yes, you're most welcome. That's right. Please help us with in introducing yourself. All right, so I'm Gabriel, and uh, I'm a business and policy analyst, and also serve as head of, head of data and operations for Dun & Bradstreet Credit Bureau. That's nice. So Dun & Bradstreet Credit Reference Bureau, we regulate the loans in the, in the financial uh, industry in Ghana. So we, by giving them what we call the credit information report. Mm -hmm. So that is what we do. So per the Credit Reporting Act 2007, we are, mm -hmm. pro we are provisioned together with the central bank you know, okay. to regulate the, the credit or the loans in the banking industry. So uh -huh. before a bank can give any loan to anyone, they perform what we call the credit checks on the okay. individual or on the business entity to, to see their credit exposures with other banks. Okay. So we regulate that sector, yes. Wow, that sounds awesome. Right, so please share with us your interest in entrepreneurship. As a business uh, analyst, sometimes most often I get invited to speak to students or to speak with some groups to you know enlighten them on entrepreneurship okay. and uh, i believe yes i believe uh owning your own business is the ideal you know thing for 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 any future anybody who wants to you know have a stable life in the near future mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm a strong believer in entrepreneurship and i believe and hope that each and everyone will get that skill and that's you know knowledge to venture in that in that area that's great. Wow, that's nice. I'm impressed. Right. So please can you help out with an email? Okay, you have your email here already. Right. So guys, please let's connect with Mr. Magnus. Sorry, with Mr. Gabriel. Do you have please a moment? Uh, okay, so this is for Mr. Magnus. So kindly help us with your email or any contact in the all chat. Right. So on uh I'm very active on LinkedIn as Gabriel for your boy. Okay. Gabriel, yeah. I want to talk to you here. Gabriel, Gabriel. Gabriel on LinkedIn. Okay. Yes, Gabriel. please. I will still drop my email address in the chat box. That's fine. Great. All right, then. Thank you. You're welcome. Please enjoy your stay here. Right. So, please show me to the next person. Who's ready, please? Madam Asan, are you with us? Would you want to introduce yourself, please? Hello. Are we here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if uh, they can hear you. Yeah, I'm trying. Please, if you can hear me, um, please drop a comment in the chat session so that I can know you are hearing me. Okay, Mr. Right. Hello. Miss God's Grace, can you hear me? Okay, Mr. Philip just dropped his email. Okay, Ms. God's Grace says she's going to hear me. Please, would you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Ms. Aposia, for your LinkedIn profile. Would you want to introduce yourself to us, please, Ms. God's Grace? Is it okay? Please. Right. 
Okay. Would you please want to introduce yourself to the house? Right. So please go ahead. We have or whoever is up, please let's hear you. Okay, right. Miss Goldberry says her place is noisy. Fine, it's good. So we have had opportunity to introduce ourselves fairly. And I want to say thank you all for joining and making time. I know we are all very busy people, but we are here to, you made it here to study. So we're just commendable. It's the step in the right direction, I would say. It means that we are all committed to adding value to ourselves and then making an impact. Right, so I want us to go back to one of the videos, get a total recap of what Yali is about, and then we can delve right into the program outline. So before then, please let me introduce the outline. So we've done the introduction by myself and then the guests as well. Then we are going to have a video presentation. So the Yali session actually is structured, right? There's a way to go about it. So we are following accordingly. So there's a video presentation, that's the lesson. Then we are going to have some lessons on. Please give me a minute. Sorry about that. So we have a video or the post presentation. Thereafter, we are going to discuss the Lean Startup methodology, and then we'll do a pitch, we'll pitch a business idea. So the Lean Startup methodology, we'll talk about a business model, but then uh, there's one captured in a pitch presentation, right? So it's a pitch, and then there's a presentation as well. When we are done, then we'll review the pitch, all of us will review the pitch and it would have discussions. All of us will get an opportunity to um, make some inputs, ask questions, and then we'll call it a day. So please brace yourself while we start. So let's go back to doing an intro, then we'll come back again. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so there's the outline. Let me show you outline. And then we have the theme song for Yali.
Hello, and thank you for reaching out to be a part of our Young African Leaders Initiative. I launched this effort because I believe that the future of Africa will be defined by extraordinary young people like you. You've shown me that you have the talent, the drive, and the determination to become the next generation of African leaders. In July 2014, the United States government announced the creation of four regional leadership centers in Accra, Ghana, Dakar, Senegal, Nairobi, Kenya, and Pretoria, South Africa. These centers have gone ahead to serve as regional hubs across the continent to encourage transformational learning and enhance leadership skills. Over the past four years, the four regional leadership centers have trained a total of 14,000 young Africans in civic leadership, public policy, and business and entrepreneurship. Alumni of Yali Africa have gone ahead to advocate for policy change, brought various forms of development to their communities and countries, and started enterprises with which they have created jobs for other young people. With funding from the MacArthur Foundation, Yali Africa will be empowered to continue training more young Africans to bring change in policy advocacy, civic leadership, and business entrepreneurship. Together, Yali Africa and the MacArthur Foundation can combine to impact Africa in the best possible ways to leave an indelible mark in the development of the most promising continent. Mm. Right. The Young African Leaders Initiative is a project initiated by the United States of America government to invest in the next generation of African leaders by providing leadership training for the youth. The program was launched in 2010 to support young African leaders as they spare growth and prosperity, strengthen democratic governance, and enhance peace and security across Africa. The Accra Regional Leadership Center, located within the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, coordinates the preparation and implementation of the training program. Some of the participants have shared their expectations with regard change Yali brought in their lives. My name is Pana Malobi. I'm from Liberia, and my track is the business and entrepreneurship track. Coming to Yali, I had no idea about business or entrepreneurship, even though I had started something in my country. My goal was to come, learn, interact, and network with fellow uh, Yalians that I have done. And I believe that it has, this has caused a lot of impact on my life. And going back to my country, I'm planning to use these skills that I've acquired to make a difference in my field of studies and in my country, which will be able to impact the rest of Africa. Thank you so much. I am Aisha Saho from the Gambia, doing business and entrepreneurship track on the Yali program. This whole program has been really transforming for me. I have been able to recognize the fact that change begins with me. I need to start within to start winning. And I'm so looking forward to making an impact in my own social society to be able to contribute to the social economic development in my country and Africa at large. Thank you so very much. My name is Lilian Lankwitete from Ghana. I was part of the civic leadership track. Being part of the YALI program has been life-changing and motivational. It has challenged me to drive change when I go back to my community. I have been inspired to do so much more. Meeting so many people and gathering all these experiences would motivate me and push me to the next level in my career. Here is Stephanie Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Right. Are we on? So I guess we've had a good uh, amount of introduction and I would want us to delve right into the lesson for today. Are we good, please? Good. Right. So for today's program, the main objectives are first of all to understand what a business model is. Then we also get to understand what is scalability. And then we also will get to understand the relevance of a great pitch. So it's important that when you have a business idea, you don't, it shouldn't just be a thought that you have in mind. Definitely you have a lot of things, but then it's important to put it into what we call a business model. 
And then when you start, or oh, as a business, it's important not just to set up, but you should be able to have a winning business model, one that you can also scale to make more profits in the future. And to be able to do this, it's important that you develop what we call a pitch, a pitch or business pitch deck. So we'll delve right into all that. So the first, the next session we are going to, so these are the key words, some of the key areas that we are supposed to be looking out for in the presentation. And then some of the areas that we can take note of. So here's the very first of course presentation. So please, as we are watching, kindly let's make notes for ourselves. Thank you. Developing the business model for your startup. There's going to be three learning objectives during this module. First, what is a business model? Second, what does scalability mean? And third, what is the essence of a great pitch? 15 years ago, investors expected startups to spend great amounts of time writing long business plans filled with forecasts that were unlikely to ever be true. Today, Sophisticated investors expect startup founders to focus on developing a business model for their startup, ideally one that scales. A business model is the collection of assumptions that must be true in order for your startup to generate a consistent profit. These assumptions include a precise description of the customers you will engage, the problem you will solve for those customers, the features of the solution to that problem, the messages and channels you will use to connect to those customers, and the economics around what and how you will charge for your solution and what it will cost you to provide it. A scalable business model for your startup is one that not only enables the business to generate a profit, but one that is well suited to grow rapidly and ideally become more profitable as the business becomes large. Rather than assuming that you have all the answers about your scalable business model from the start, you as a smart entrepreneur today begin with the idea that you have hypotheses that must be tested through actual interactions with customers. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what you can validate through hard data derived from actual customer interactions. The Lean Startup methodology, popularized by Steve Blank and Eric Ries, is one important way of going through this continuous process of experimentation and business model development. A lean startup approach to building your business pairs an iterative, experimental approach to developing an in-depth understanding of your customers and their needs and wants with a fast, flexible approach to building your product. The idea is that you build as little of your product as possible, test it with real customers, then make quick tweaks and changes to the product, and repeat. To communicate your scalable business model to potential investors and other audiences, you should maintain an up-to-date pitch or story you tell about your business. The physical manifestation of your pitch is a deck, usually 10 to 12 slides and no more, and as visual as you can make it. Or the physical deck, though, is really developing a great story to tell. After all, there's going to be a lot of moments when you have the opportunity to pitch someone but won't happen to have your deck handy. Every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is about setting the scene and introducing compelling characters to whom your audience can relate. The middle is about explaining a challenge that your main character faces. The end is about how your character resolves this problem in a satisfying way. Your pitch should unfold the same way. You need to start by explaining to investors who the user of your solution is. The more vivid a picture you can paint, the better. You then need to explain the incredibly frustrating or expensive problem that your user faces. A combination of anecdotes or case studies to make the problem seem real with data to explain the size of the problem is ideal. You need to end your pitch by showing how your solution solves this problem. And it's really important that you do this in the simplest terms possible. Finally, the epilogue to your story is explaining how you scale your business into a really big, interesting market. Now that you've completed the course, please visit yali.state.gov to take the quiz. This will help you test your knowledge and earn credit towards a special certificate.
Right. Thank you for watching. Right. I hope we made our notes. Did we? Mr. Crappy, thank you for joining. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely happy to be here today. And um, yeah, it's great to be here with everybody. And thanks for joining us as well. Yes. So please, before I proceed, Mr. Stephen Crappy is one of our guests uh, for the event and he's now joining in. Right. So we'll just play the lesson video and I wish we'll play it one more time so that me the first one, the law of elements being introduced. This time around, we can pay attention to the details in there. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Fine, I see. Fine. Okay. Developing the business model for your startup. There's gonna be three learning objectives during this module. First, what is a business model? Second, what does scalability mean? And third, what is the essence of a great pitch? 15 years ago, investors expected startups to spend great amounts of time writing long business plans filled with forecasts that were unlikely to ever be true. Today, Sophisticated investors expect startup founders to focus on developing a business model for their startup, ideally one that scales. A business model is the collection of assumptions that must be true in order for your startup to generate a consistent profit. These assumptions include a precise description of the customers you will engage, the problem you will solve for those customers, the features of the solution to that problem, the messages and channels you will use to connect to those customers, and the economics around what and how you will charge for your solution and what it will cost you to provide it. A scalable business model for your startup is one that not only enables the business to generate a profit, but one that is well suited to grow rapidly and ideally become more profitable as the business becomes large. Rather than assuming that you have all the answers about your scalable business model from the start, you as a smart entrepreneur today begin with the idea that you have hypotheses that must be tested through actual interactions with customers. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what you can validate through hard data derived from actual customer interactions. The Lean Startup methodology, popularized by Steve Blank and Eric Ries, is one important way of going through this continuous process of experimentation and business model development. A Lean Startup approach to building your business pairs an iterative, experimental approach to developing an in-depth understanding of your customers and their needs and wants with a fast, flexible approach to building your product. The idea is that you build as little of your product as possible, test it with real customers, then make quick tweaks and changes to the product and repeat. To communicate your scalable business model to potential investors and other audiences, you should maintain an up-to-date pitch or story you tell about your business. The physical manifestation of your pitch is a deck usually 10 to 12 slides and no more, and as visual as you can make it. More important than the physical deck, though, is really developing a great story to tell. After all, there's going to be a lot of moments when you have the opportunity to pitch someone but won't happen to have your deck handy. Every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is about setting the scene and introducing compelling characters to whom your audience can relate. The middle is about explaining a challenge that your main character faces. The end is about how your character resolves this problem in a satisfying way. Your pitch should unfold the same way. You need to start by explaining to investors who the user of your solution is. The more vivid a picture you can paint, the better. You then need to explain the incredibly frustrating or expensive problem that your user faces. A combination of anecdotes or case studies to make the problem seem real with data to explain the size of the problem is ideal. You need to end your pitch by showing how your solution solves this problem. And it's really important that you do this in the simplest terms possible. Finally, the epilogue to your story is explaining how you scale your business into a really big, interesting market. Now that you've completed the course, please visit yali.state.gov to take the quiz. 
This will help you test your knowledge and earn credit towards a special certificate. Right. Okay, guys, thank you. Right, please, um, if you join in, uh, highly uh, mute yourself. We are having feedback from someone. Can you mute yourself for us? Hello? Right. Please can you mute yourself if you just joined us. If you can hear me, dear or please let me know you can hear me. Miss Alex, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Yeah, I can hear you clearly, please. Right. That's good. Okay. Right. So for the presentation, these are some of the key areas that the video touched on. So I'd want to do a summary of the lesson and then so the keynote areas. Then we can move in, talk about the lean method. And then going forward, we're supposed to discuss a business idea, identify a problem, and then apply how we are going to apply the lean method, lean startup methodology to it. So from there, then we'll go into a pitch and a business model an example of a business model, right? So in essence, the video mentioned that the traditional method of starting up a business is, or usually would put all the structures in place, set up a full business, something that we haven't necessarily tested or a business idea that we don't know whether it works or not, but then we go full in we set up and at the end of the day, you realize that probably you have your business idea didn't even work or there was no market for it in the first place. So the Lean Startup methodology is basically to help you to be able to, you, when you have an idea, you test it on a smaller scale. Then after testing it, you are able to you test it in real life, not just what you think, but you go into the real world, talk to your customers, get feedback from them to see whether it is a business idea that is profitable in the first place or one that people are likely to show interest in or pay for. So what he said was that you have the idea, you then come up with hypothesis or statements that you believe to be true. And then you go out into the real world, test it with people and then get your feedback. When you get a feedback, you can go back to rework the business idea that's if there were changes or even rework your hypothesis and then when you are done, then you go on to, when you are done, sorry, I wanted to show you something. When you are done, you go back into the real world to now launch your business in the market. So here is a diagram or a presentation for how to apply the Lean method. But if you, let me enlarge it. Right, so it's said to, first of all, develop the idea, you create a hypothesis. Then after creating that hypothesis, you produce a minimum viable product that is a small... A small Hi, Dorothy. Yes, please. Yeah, this is Gabriel. Um, I used to share your screen because I'm not able to see any PPT. Okay, it's actually sharing. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm not able to see. I'm just seeing, you know, okay. Okay, so maybe Dorothy, if you can um, just um, stop sharing and reshare it. Okay, right. Just um, so that there's anybody. Right. So I'm sharing again. Okay. So please, can you see now? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. So I wanted us to have a graphical view of the Lean Startup methodology before. So then I was at a point where you could use a minimum viable product. 
So after you've de developed the idea and your hypothesis, you instead of setting up fully, you can decide to produce a minimum amount of your product, take it to people, perhaps friends, family, or people you think would need a product, and then you go out to them, let them use it, get your feedback after that. You'd refine or real work, adjust the idea and the hypothesis to the point where you know that you have an idea or a hypothesis or a product that can work in the markets before you launch. But what it says is that between the process of creating the idea, creating the minimum viable product, testing it, and then reworking it, you should be able to do that as fast as possible. So that you save time. You don't spend a year or two trying to apply the lean startup method. Then that is no longer lean, right? So that's about that. Please, let's go back up. All right, sorry. Hello, Dorothy. Yes, please. Yeah, here's again, bro. One second. Are we supposed to ask? Uh, can we ask questions or after the presentation? Please, after the presentation, we have uh, time for questions. So please note the questions down for me. All right, that's fine. Right. So, so, okay. All right. Thank you. Please, you're welcome. So that's a uh, lean methodology. So for the purpose of this presentation, I have a concept or a business idea that I'd want to pitch, right? So I'd go back to my pitch and then take a session of it <clears throat> and then we'll come back. It's applicable to the lean method, right? So the problem here, as regards to corporate people having a uh, difficulty in assessing food or healthy meals at work because they are busy people and then they have very demanding lifestyle. So that's a problem that I speak to solve for my business. And then for statistics purposes, we are told that poor diet is responsible for about 22% of all deaths or that percentage. And this was recorded in 2017. So then how do we apply the lean method in solving a problem like this? So I came up with an idea or a concept for food or a solution to the problem, which is healthy meals cooked and delivered to corporate people at workplaces. So for the purposes of applying the lean method, what I'll do first of all is that I have the idea. So the hypothesis is to assume that some uh, corporate workers definitely want to live well, they want to be healthy, right? And that if we can provide a solution or provide food that gives them access to food at work while they, are also, they also get to be healthy at the same time, it will go on to uh, boost their productivity, right? So what then I'll go on to develop a minimum viable product, which is target about say five people, corporate people, and then I'll start by cooking or providing meals to them for them at their workplace. Let's say within a period of about a month or two to test the market, test the recipes and get their feedback in terms of what they want and what we are also offering. And then we will work it. And then if there's any uh, part of the hypothesis we need to redefine, we do that. And thereafter, we would proceed to launch our business in the market, believing that it would go well for us. So that is how I would um, apply the Lean Startup Method to the business idea where we cook meals for corporate workers and serve it at their workplaces, not just any meals, healthy meals that are personalized to what they need. So that's on the Lean Startup methodology, right? So moving on. 
Okay. So I think in not enough to waste my time. Let's move on to the pitch presentation. So in the pitch presentation, I'm pitching this very idea of um, providing healthy meals to corporate workers, busy corporate workers who care about their health. So we move right to the pitch. All right, please, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, so please, while the pitch is ongoing, kindly take note of some of the key items that were mentioned in the video. And then if you have any questions or suggestions, we'll take them after us. Thank you. Right. So our business is called Eat Fit. And this is our pitch deck. Hi, hi Dorothy. Re really sorry to budge, budge in again. I, I think you may need to reshare your screen again because okay. um, m mine is frozen here. So I think okay. everybody, other people might have the same issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we good? Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, it's fine now. Okay, right. So this is Eat Fit. Sorry. Sorry, I'll share again. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Right. So we are each fit, uh, fit, and this is our pitch deck. Um, Dorothy, I'm the one doing the presenting the pitch. Right. So who are we? We are a food service business, and then we have a passion to help corporate people, busy corporate people who are health conscious, um, to help them in terms of the food, having access to food, not just any food. We want them to have access to healthy food and so that they can be able to live their active lifestyle and then to live the best of their lives. So who are our customers? Our customers are busy corporate women, busy corporate men, busy CEOs and bosses who are definitely health conscious. That's our market. Right. So the problem we are solving is that uh, corporate people or some corporate people find difficulty in having access to healthy meals at work because of their work schedules. They usually have a tight work week and probably will not have much time on weekends to also cook healthy meals before, uh, before work or even on a daily basis. And as indicated earlier, as I said that, or according to the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, about 10.9 million deaths are associated with poor diets, which is about 22% of deaths as recorded in the year 2017. Right. So then how do we solve this problem? We solve this problem by offering healthy meals delivered to our clients at their workplaces. Right, what do we offer them specifically? We are not only offering them meals, but then we, First of all, offer meal consultations in connection with dietitians so that I believe that or we have a habit of cooking and then the entire household eats the same food. But realistically, everybody has got their own needs in terms of nutrition. So we believe that it's fair that we look into the person's medical history and nutritional needs and then plan a meal that is solely for them. Right, so that's our meal consultation service. And then when we come up with that, we will develop a yearly plan in terms of their meals. So from throughout the days of the week, and let's note that we are doing lunch 
just basically lunch. That's most people would probably eat something in the morning before coming to work. But for lunch, that is where the main problem is, right? So we have the personalized meals and then there's a meal consultation. And then every day of the week, that's work week, they get to have food delivered to them at work. So they subscribe yearly or per every six months. And then we know we have a contract with them and it goes on and on, right? So some of our major competitors are food service businesses in Ghana. We know of Jumia Food, Papaya, Boat Food. That's a very popular ones. On the high end, we have restaurants like Santo Coop, you know, and so on. Please give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a key part of our discussion has been the business model. I decided to capture it in the page. Sorry. Sorry, one chicken lollipop, then one corn and vegetable for the mushroom. Uh, could you please mute your audio for me? We have fresh juice, we have a uh, Oh, we have guys, please. Sorry about that. Yes, Miss Michelle. Could you please yeah, one audio? audio. Do, 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 do. All right. Can we go on, please? Mr. Steven, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, right. So first of all, I want to talk about a business model. And then while talking about that, um, I mentioned earlier that the pitch is more like two in one. The business model is a component of the pitch, but we want to discuss the business model in itself as per the topic under discussion. So the business model has various sessions. First of all, we have a session like products, we have customer segments customer relationships, channels, the value of value proposition, sorry, key activities, key resources, key partners, cost structure, and revenue streams. So by the time you are able to outline and make inputs or make decisions about all these areas, you realize that you have to um, on a first scan, you're able to answer relevant questions or have a quick overview of all the areas that are very relevant in your business. So instead of just having an idea and letting it, trying to see if you can implement it, if you have the business model, it helps you. And most importantly, it saves you from the best of Having to write and the Oops. Okay. Sorry about the echo. I don't know where it's coming from. So instead of spending hours or even months writing a business plan, within a few days, you can easily put a business model together. And <clears throat> any investor that sees your business model at a glance will be able to have a fair idea of what you are doing then take a quick look at the relevant areas that you are interested in, All right? So we have cost structure and revenue streams here too. So for our business or each fit, we are targeting corporate men and women, CEOs and bosses. So what we, the products we are offering, meal consultations, personalized meal plans, and then healthy personalized meals delivered at work. So we seek to offer in-service person, self-service, and then also wellness communities. What problems are we solving? 
is having a problem of lack of access to healthy meals at work due to the corporate, busy corporate lifestyle of um, corporate workers. And some of the key activities you're going to be doing will be diet evaluation and planning, meal preparations, meal delivery, advertising. Those are some of the key components of what we are going to do. Right. So I guess we've talked about the value we offer all under value proposition. So in order to do this, some of the key resources we need will be kitchen space, kitchen equipment. We need partners. We need capital. We need staff. We need some patents as well. So talk of partners, we have, we need partners such as wellness clubs, or places we can actually scout for customers. So some of them include wellness clubs, dietitians, gym instructors, and medical facilities. That's where you find people who are naturally uh, health conscious, not to mention of business corporate uh, entities or business enterprises and, and so forth, right? So this will give us access to members and also uh, we get to have insights into what the market is like ahead of time because you have uh, you already have um, customers available in these areas, right? So this is going to help us to have a wider market reach and also be able to sit, make some money for ourselves. So some of the key suppliers for this business will be farmers, uh, kitchen equipment suppliers, and some resources they can give us is food ingredients and definitely equipment, right? And this is supposed to ensure that we have constant supply of resources to be able to run our businesses, right? And talk of cost, some of the major costs we would need to incur for this business will be in terms of kitchen space, equipment, food ingredients, packaging, branding, advertising, and then some stuff. And how do we intend to make money? We intend to make money through the sale of meals, through subscription fees, through sale of whole foods, and then the meal plan consultations. So at a glance, this is a quick view of all that we seek to do, how we seek to do it, the value we seek to offer, how we intend to make money, um, the partners, and virtually everything that we need to have a successful business in a very quick and simplified way. A moment, please. Right. So before we move on, we could take a quick glance at the industry we are operating in. So they'd say that the global food market is a big one. And in 2021, it was worth about 2.5 uh, trillion US dollars. And it's had an overall growth of about 15.6% yes, in 2021 as against 2022, and is estimated to go to about 4.3 trillion dollars in 2028. So it's a big industry with very good prospects. So we made a sales forecast of how much we seek to make from the business. A three-year sales plan in a in sales summary. So in the first year we seek to make about 400,000 worth of profit. Second year about 720,000 and third year we seek to make a lot more, 1,960,000 in Ghana cities. Right. And key, a key ingredient of the business, or as noted in the key words, is scaling. So we have a scaling timeline or <clears throat> how we seek to expand. So in 20, we are projecting that by 2024, we move from a client base. We are starting with a client base of 50. So we would hope to move to about 100 in the first year. Second year, we're moving from 100 to 200. In the third year, we are moving from 200 to about 400. So it's based on that that we're able to come up with the sales figures in terms of cost and profit. So the amount we require for this startup is 350,000 to start with. 
And out of that, we've allocated them in terms of what we need them for. So we have space, taking about 30%, cooking equipment, 20%, food ingredients, 15 packaging, 5 branding and advertisement, 5%, and salary, 25%. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, right. So these are our team members, our able team members who are supporting us who are coming together for the business. And that's Mr. Alexander himself, myself, and Mr. Crookie. So yes, we have come to I've come to the end of the pitch. In case we have investors on the platform, you can reach me through this. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Right. So that's the end of my pitch. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, our beautiful host, Dorothy. Thank you. But, uh, can I come in? Right. Let's delve right in. Yes. Uh, this is Alexandra again, the uh, Namilex Communication. Thank and you. Uh, before uh, we open the floor for our other uh, guests, I'd like to share. Uh, this interesting uh, uh, scenario with you. Okay. Just uh, when the Dorothy finished and talking about the the sales forecast, I was okay. in a meeting uh, just last two days uh, with uh, a hotel in East Legon here. Uh, let me okay. let me uh, withhold the name first. And okay. uh, they have actually upgraded the hotel, and they wanted to um, inculcate um, something like uh, a lounge. Okay. So they called me and the manager was discussing with me if I could uh, develop um, a business plan so we can pitch it to the director to okay. see uh, if you'll be interested. To... <laughs> so I came up with a very simple uh, business plan. I created okay. my pitch and everything. And, you know, when I sent the, uh, the document, the first thing the director opened was the last page and okay. opened the, the sales forecast. <laughs> <laughs> But of course. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked at you and said, so do you actually mean uh, in, in, in three years I can make all this money? I say, yes, you can uh -huh. if, you, if you are willing to, to invest. <laughs> That's true. So actually, sorry, let me come in. Is it okay? When I, I, um, I made an estimate of about 50 CDs per plate per clients per day, when I did the numbers, the amount I was getting, I was confused. I was like, really? You can actually make this much from, you know, <laughs> that. And it's like, if you don't do the math, sometimes you don't really get to have a feel of what you stand to gain, you know. So it's a very good one. Yeah. So please go ahead. Yes. Uh, so um, I discussed everything with him, with him and uh, mm -hmm. he was very much interested and he loved uh, the business plan that I proposed to him. But his fear was uh, investing because looking at the the sales forecast over over a couple of years. It looks mm -hmm. so sweet and attractive. But uh, <laughs> for him to, I told him, I mean, at least we can invest some uh, 200,000 Ghana cities to make sure that we have everything in place in order to start uh, social media, commercials and all that. It, it looked attractive to him and he still wanted to be sure if he can, uh, you know, recoup all that money in, in two to three years time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so that was just fine, by the way. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Okay. So um, can we please have, if there are questions, we can put them across so that um, as the guests respond or give their feedback, they can take the opportunity to answer some of those questions. Okay. This is fine. So please, I uh, guess, if you have a question, kindly unmute your audio and let's talk. I think somebody wanted to ask a question earlier on. 
That's Mr. Gabriel, right? So you're all ears. I think. Okay. Are we here, please? Perhaps anything you want clarification on or any observation, any addition, subtraction. Hello. Yes, please. Hi, Sadekman. Yeah, thank you. Hi, um, okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Dekman. Uh, just want to ask a quick question okay. about um, the lean. Is, is it a lean plan or methodology or? Yeah, lean startup method. The lean startup, okay. So does it apply to all sorts of businesses? Because I was thinking, um, for example, you have, you're doing a, a chicken farm, okay? <laughs> and then it takes like four or five months to get the chicken ready. Okay. So are you, are we saying you're going to test your methods for six months and get two or three products out and go and test the market before? What does it typically apply with? Is it the quick kind of things that can come in the market or we can generalize this for all sorts of businesses? Okay, so please, would any of my guests want to take that? Oh, right. Okay. Thank you um, for that question, please. Can I take that? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, Digman, uh, for your question. But um, like you are saying, uh, developing a business and, and, and implementing a business all goes with not just uh, the book, but applying the, th uh, the practicals as well. Like, for example, if you are investing, you don't want to invest uh, 200,000 cities and put it into the business. Certainly, you need to start a plan and start from um, definitely from the beginner's level to a middle level before you get to your, your big level. So certainly, let's say if you have a farm and you're starting with, let's say, uh, 20 chicken, you start with 20 chicken and see uh, your market uh, uh, your plan and then your market segment, and then you know the kind of market you are targeting. If you segment your market and you start with the first one and you're able to um, get what you want, certainly you can expand into the next segment. So you can do it uh, a bit at a time and not try to uh, put all your money at a goal. Sometimes you can get disappointed. So you mm -hmm. should allow the business itself to, to grow and create that attraction for you yourself in order to invest more into the business. So that is just about, you know, uh, monitoring the output of the business. So that is what I can say. Great. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. So to add up, I believe that the method can be applied to virtually every business in that in any business, you have the opportunity to start from somewhere and then build up on it. So the method talks about being able to go through from the point of idea generation to creating your most, a minimum valuable product to testing and hypothesis and back again to the drawing board. So it depends on the service you're offering. That would have a role to play in your um. Uh, the time or the duration within which you're able to go through one cycle. So for instance, if you're growing cashew, you'd, you're better off starting small, giving yourself it, the cashew will take, for example, two years or a year. I don't know the timeline for cashew, but um, you're better off in terms of saving yourself money and disappointment, going through the cycle, in the shortest time as much as possible so that you're able to test the market. Okay. And for the chicken uh, too, if you have a fair idea of the duration it takes for them to mature. So it's important to start small by going through the cycle before you get to launch on a larger scale. That way it saves you a lot of heartache and a lot of money lost. So I guess that's my input. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Michael, Mr. Michael Lai, it's good to have you. You're welcome. Mr. Westwood. Mr. Westwood. Okay. We introduced ourselves in the beginning, but I guess you are not with us yet, so we are giving you a welcome. And Miss Joanne and OPY Lotus, you are all welcome. Thanks for being a part of us. Bye. 
Thank you. Thank you. So do we have Mr. Crepe here? We have Mr. Crepe. Guys, please give, give me a minute. Let me check on Mr. Crepe. I'm looking for Mr. Crepe. Yeah, how much? Uh, I'll tell him my Oh, okay. I think Mr. Kirby has a little challenge. So he'll join us very soon. Oh, okay. Hey, I have someone connecting. My good friend here, Miss Cynthia. Yes, darling. Good <laughs> to have you. JJ, this woman is an obo bow. A very big woman. I'm fine. <laughs> yes, madam. I mean, come on, post I'm very fine. She has a big post. <laughs> Right. So, guys, please, while we wait for Mr. Kirby to reconnect. No, I don't have to say anyway. Well, hey, she has. Please, before Mr. Kirby can reconnect, we can use the opportunity to introduce ourselves, those of us who are not here, right? Is that okay? Is that fine? Okay. What I think, think we have we have Opai on the line. Okay. Opai is there, and then I see... Uh, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Womintinata. Okay. Yes. Right. So please, whoever is ready, can you introduce yourself? Cynthia, I, I think the network is a challenge for her. Ms. Alai, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us about what you do and you can also tell us What's your interest in entrepreneurship? And Mr. Dekman is also here. Please help introduce yourself. We did that earlier, but I guess you are not here. So, okay, Mr. Crepe is reconnecting, but please let's introduce ourselves. Okay. Yes. So I'm Mr. Michael Lai. Okay. Nice meeting you. Um, a branch manager with the Noble House Company. That's nice. Um, also in the hospitality industry. Okay, great. Wow. So what exactly do you do? It's more or less like a food and beverage service. Okay. Right. So we, we want to hear a bit more. We have a floor. Like you tell us a bit of what you like, a bit of details. We are interested. Or well, you know, we'll come to your place, girl. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a network, but yeah, yeah. Okay. So sorry, guys. I had a small technical glitch. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Good to so, have you back. Yeah, thank you. Right. This Eli is on the floor. He's introducing himself. Awesome. Okay, great. Please go ahead, Mr. Eli. I think his network is giving him some challenges. Right. So, Mr. Oh, Lake, sure. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, oh, okay, guys. Um, my name is Dickman. I have one of the scariest names on the planet. <laughs> uh, interestingly, my my first name is Dickman, and my last name is very contradictory. My last name is Adakwa. So oh. if if you think about it, a Dickman who <laughs> sleeps alone—that's very weird, you know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh boy. 
So um, uh, we, we are into IT, technology. Uh, we work for banks mostly. Uh, we provide so fraud solutions, fraud detection solutions for um, banks in Ghana and um, some other West African uh, countries. Uh, so we are the reasons your accounts are safe. You go back to your account and you don't have your money. <laughs> All right, so that's what I do. Um, uh, I'm the chief errand officer for our company. Hey, so I, I, do, I do all the errands. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like the way you put it. <laughs> hey, what does that mean? Sales or marketing person, would that mean that? Um, I do the, all the errands, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. That's nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. great. Yeah, could you please leave your email in the chat session of us so that we can... We yeah, can... so I can leave anything technology, guys, if you need any help, any assistance, you can... My company's name is called Fairs Vision Technologies. You can look us up anytime. Fairs Vision Technology. technology. Okay, that's great. It's good to have you. Right. So, guys, Mr. Lai, are you good now to continue? Yes, yes, yeah, we are good to go. Okay, right. Is, so that, guys, is there any question? Okay, so, uh, Mr. Michael Lai, please remember to leave your email so that we can connect with you subsequently. Right. So, Miss Cynthia. I think before we take uh, questions, can we have Miss Cynthia introduce herself? If you can hear us. Miss Cynthia, I'm Thedu Buatin. I'm giving all her names out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Right. So I guess I... Uh-huh, she's here. Good. Miss Cynthia. <laughs> Hello, Cynthia. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of network challenge for other others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm having a serious challenges myself. I'm just trying to manage. That's true. I think it must be the network. Everywhere is very cloudy. Yeah. It's I don't know how true that is. Well, that is that is uh, according to technology, that is not true. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's probably you are projecting from. Uh, a satellite where you're going to have uh, probably uh, interferences from clouds and all that, but internet mm -hmm. should be fine. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Miss Cynthia Ampedu. Oh, I guess she's having network challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. So guys, please, um, can we keep the questions coming? Do we understand everything? Is there any area that we need to respond sheets? Right. Um, while we wait for that, we can we would want to go to our guests and then have their take on the lean method itself. What do they think uh, in terms of their relevance? How do you think we can apply them? So we can have Mr. Alexander take that first and then Mr. Crepe will, do, will take on the lean methodology. Am I take it first? Yes, um, I want you to take it first if it's fine. What's okay. your take on the lean method, starter method? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, like uh, the first uh, person asked the first question was mm -hmm. actually um, relating to, to lean method and he wanted to know if it ap applies to any kind of um, uh, business plan. So we actually uh, said that lean method usually has to do with Literating and uh, doing your experimental and uh, fast planning and checking of uh, whatever you are pitching uh, to to an investor. So therefore, if you you need to pitch uh, a business uh, proposal to an investor, you need mm -hmm. to put up your your structures very well to mm -hmm. understand that the investor will be very much interested in what you're stating in in your business plan. Because exactly. if it is not well structured, certainly. Uh, the investor looks at it and uh, he wouldn't be interested in putting his money where you, the entrepreneur, 
you are you are asking investor to 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 support you with. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Right. So you think it's worth the wait or it's worth the while as compared to just assuming that you know how we are. Like I have an idea. So sure bank has for this, I'm betting on it. It will work out. They will say how far. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, um, most people uh, usually take it for granted, knowing that a, a person trying to be an entrepreneur, so many ideas can come into your head. But uh, if you don't put the idea into paper and mm -hmm. try to develop a business plan and follow the, the rules and procedures as mm -hmm. to how um, entrepreneurship is created, you're still going to be wondering with your ideas. Mm -hmm. Because ideas are actually nothing until it is it is fertilized into into uh, reality. Mm -hmm. So you need to actually. Sometimes you can have the idea, but you need someone with the with the knowledge to guide you as okay. to transfer your ideas into a proper planned uh, entrepreneurial business in order to implement it. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Great. So, um, Mister. Happy, please. What's your take on the Lean Startup methodology? Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much, um, Dorothy. Uh, this is very, very educative. Um, in the sense that about I, I, I would generalize about most entrepreneurs in Ghana or maybe mm -hmm. Africa at large would mm -hmm. normally start a business based on just an idea, which is not well researched. Okay. Um, most people even come from abroad, and mm -hmm. the first thing they'll ask you is, "Hey, Charlie, so what's going on?" in this country, what they, <laughs> what they sell, uh, what, what business I will put my money for inside then make a run my body. Meanwhile, yes. you're looking at this dude that you're talking with. Uh, mm -hmm. This dude is able to buy champagne in Ghana. He's mm -hmm. popping up bottles in the clubs. He's doing mm -hmm. so many things. But you're wondering, where is this person getting their money? And they're telling you that, oh, I only run a shop on the mm -hmm. higher street. And you're thinking, and you're thinking that, oh my God, this guy is making so much money from this shop that they're running on the high street, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And only for you to set up the same type of business with your hard earned money from the cold weather, with hailstorms mm -hmm. and everything, come back mm -hmm. to your country, set up the same business, and the whole thing is a flop. Because yeah. it was never true. Anyway, it was a whole facade in the first place, okay? <laughs> yeah. We also know that about 98% um, mm -hmm. statistically shows us that 98% of people that do startups fail mm -hmm. within one year. Uh, okay. Why is that so? Uh, it's not because they never had good intentions. It's not because they wanted to, you know, um, misuse somebody's investment. But mm -hmm. it was all because of the uh, the fact that that whatever idea that they had was mm -hmm. never, um, you know, visualized. Okay. To become fruitful, uh, okay. in a way that is easily duplicatable. If you understand okay. what I'm coming from, right? Exactly. Once you can have an idea that you can create to fruition and actually mm -hmm. make it duplicatable, mm -hmm. then it's possible that it can also be sustainable exactly. and has, has a chance to survive in exactly. you know, whatever environment in which you place this type of idea, depending on how much research you've done. So exactly. it's a very, very important topic. Um, I have stopped long ago telling people who come from abroad about, oh, you know, what's going on in this country? I'm like, do your own research. Whatever mm -hmm. idea you have, please, mm -hmm. if you feel you can't do your research, hire somebody who is very good into researching, mm -hmm. okay, to do the research in whatever industry and area which you uh, in which you want to, you know, participate, uh, mm -hmm. for you to have some facts and figures, for you to make some concrete decisions, you know, mm -hmm. rather than basing everything on assumption or what we usually do, the idea of copy cutting. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I have so many instances of people. Uh, so one time I set up a pork joint, all right? And before I did this pork joint, I made sure I went into uh, the trenches. The trenches was like, you know, going to meet people who are rearing pork, how they kill it, the environment in which the animal was. I learned how to actually, um, you know, cook this uh, animal and the whole process and everything. And I was actually involved in my own uh, startup in, in the fact that I did, I did the first cooking. I went to okay. buy the meat, did the first cooking, uh, learned how to use the spices and everything, cut them up. And I only employed a sales girl to do what? Do the selling outside for me because I had other things to do. Okay. It started pretty well. 
I was making about 150 Ghana CDs every day. It was okay. just for the evening, you know, mm -hmm. but um, how did this idea flop? One, it was because of the, the fact that I could not have, um, I could not get the right people to employ who were okay. stable, that wanted to stay and, and were ready to, you know, grow with a startup by being paid maybe 150 Ghana CDs or 200 Ghana CDs a month. In okay. fact, uh, this is by the by the side. My my worker one day told me that boss, and I said yes. <laughs> boss, when he said me call my boyfriend for cry every week, cry one thousand five hundred, uh, me one hundred and fifty Ghana. The end me. Meanwhile, I'm paying this girl one hundred and fifty Ghana every month because of the type of business we were doing at that time. All right. So when she said this to me, I mean, I'm a young entrepreneur at the time. What is she trying to tell me? Like, listen, I ain't doing the work anymore. Basically, you know. So, <laughs> The business did not end because it was a bad idea. But what actually happened was, as soon as I started, every other hotel or bar in the area started to do pork. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. so people now start coming in with bigger muscles. They were doing bigger uh, platforms that I had, uh, mm -hmm. you know, spending money to actually get this thing going on. So mm -hmm. what I did was I came out of that business because I realized that, uh, one, after actually working with the meat for some time, I had my own uh, reservations about the pork uh, business. So I decided to come out of it. But what was my point? Today, those businesses are all shut down. Okay. They are not in operation anymore. Why? Okay. Because they never really thought it through. It exactly. was just because they saw somebody doing it and they thought, I was being successful, but I had other ideas. I was using online platforms. I was getting orders from people. I was already in the entertainment industry. So I was using that as a leverage. I had my own ways of pushing my own agenda, exactly. but it was more for them like, oh, it's, it's a good idea. Pork will be at top pork, so let's do this. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's a very interesting um, topic that you've raised and the idea of having that lean approach to development of business ideas. And the idea of iteration, I think Dickman will be in a very good position uh, to, you know, educate us about the idea of iterative uh, procedures and processes. Because when you're into software development, this is one of the things or one of the methodologies mm -hmm. that um, works pretty well in software development. And what is that telling you? It tells you that everything is in stages, okay. all right? There's no need to, you know, put in money when you don't need to put in money. Do you know what I mean? I always tell people, I am actually a strong believer that you don't actually need money to start a business. Okay. Yes, you need the idea. Yes, you need money at some point, but mm -hmm. you, 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 you can turn this idea into something that will bring you money first. For, for example, let me speak about Oriflame. Oriflame is a, we are a cosmetic manufacturer uh, mm -hmm. from Sweden. I'm the area sales manager for Ghana. And um, we are in the business of selling cosmetics, right? And what we do, we are basically a multi-level marketing company. And okay. therefore, that means we, we don't sell directly to um, the Joe public. Okay. We work with partners. So, for example, yourself, Dorothy, you sign up with us to become a partner. And okay. then through you, we will sell our products, right? Okay. So we build entrepreneurs. We build people who we build leaders, okay. transformational leaders who are also going to further go on and transform other people. What are we doing? We are building leaders who can duplicate what we've taught them to okay. other people. So okay. by the idea of duplication, simplification, mm -hmm. you know that you have a sustainable business. So for example, we started with 92 brand partners in Ghana just last okay. year. Okay. One year and a half on, we have over 8,000 brand partners who wow. are actively doing this business. All right. Wow. What is it? Is the idea of duplication. It's also the idea of um transformational leadership all right okay. so for example let's look at your pitch um, mm -hmm. so far as um, food healthy eating is concerned mm -hmm. one thing that i think that we should add to our pitch is mm -hmm. education because a lot of people in the corporate world um mm -hmm. are so cloud clouded with a lot of things they need to think about that eating healthy is not an area where we have a lot of education okay Right. So, for example, if you tell somebody not to eat banana in the evening, they might not understand why they should not eat banana in the evening. But there are okay. consequences of eating banana mm -hmm. in the evening. It will, okay. it will definitely affect your stomach. Exactly. Having apples in the evening. Apples are supposed to be had around breakfast time because it has a positive Absolutely. effect on you. Okay. Nuts. Nuts are supposed to be have, had around breakfast time. So there's a lot of education that needs to be done 
where okay. it would help people to understand why they even need to eat healthy in the first place. Okay. Awesome. Because we're up against the likes of aggressive marketing from the bold food, the global food, and the rest of it. So we need to have a niche market where people need to be able to access valuable information that would okay. help them to, you know, go through what we call the customer journey, the awareness mm-hmm. stage of the fact that they are not eating healthy. And okay. these are the things that they are missing out on. The fact that they need to have a consideration stage where they are considering whether, you know, uh, they need to change habits because that's very important. They need to change mindset. Uh, okay. there, there should be a degree of discipline from their side to be able okay. to achieve. So it doesn't matter what we're saying as the food company, bringing the idea of healthy eating, healthy eating. Uh, okay. If the person is not disciplined enough, if they're not following certain mm-hmm. procedures, we will run across 90 basically. You know, exactly. so education is a bridge uh, to really give, help us to develop a niche market for a group of people who are ready to make a change. Exactly. Okay, because what you're trying to do is we are trying to affect a serious positive change that exactly. if it escapes, it will be, you know, an okay situation for everybody. All right. Okay. So um, I just love the topic. I think we should, you know, do more of this topic and maybe elaborate on it more um, next time. But this is my take on that in methodology. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, so to add up, uh, one of the ways in which we intend to reach customers is to uh, for a health community. So I guess the education, when you have a whole community of people, it's not just the food, but then it becomes a lifestyle. So then you get to have the education and then you get to have people who are also like-minded. And then you, when you are with people, you're more likely to stick to your goals or the things you set out to do. So I guess it's in the right direction, definitely. Education, education, education. Great. So, Ms. Krabi, before you went off, we're just about to take a look at the pitch itself. Okay. Before you went off. So, awesome. we can, yeah, we can quickly take a look or review the pitch. Let me uh, quickly share the slides again. Mm-hmm. We'll just do a quick glance and then we can have some take on it. Then we'll take final remarks and we are done for the day. Awesome. So far, <laughs> yeah, so far. I'm having fun, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm having fun too. Mm-hmm. Really enjoying myself. Yes. Right. Okay, so let me delve right to the top. Okay. Right. So then uh, let me not talk again, but I'll quickly do for the sake of memory, I'll quickly let the slides run and then get to come back. Miss, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So this was the intro page. We are called It's Fit. I'm trying so hard not to run through again as I was doing a presentation. So we have a session on who we are as a people. Let's take note of that. In the video, it was indicated that <clears throat> the pitch should be, you should try and do a few pages as much as possible. So in this, I had about 12 pages or so. Right, so who we are, then who are customer bases, the corporate people, men, women, bosses, CEOs, and all. So we have some talking about the problem itself, that's lack of access to healthy meals that work <clears throat> due to busy lifestyles and demanding shadows. And then some statistics on the state of diet and the, the connection it has with our health. And I was actually very shocked to know that a whooping 22% of deaths are all caused by poor diets in adults. And this is very much avoidable. So with this statistic, I realized that we have a lot to do and that it's very critical. You know, after all, they say we eat to live, right? So it's very true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then that solution we came up with was to be able to offer healthy meals mm-hmm. that are personalized to corporate workers at the workplace. So they sign up for the meals and every day 
we know we have to give them lunch. So we are focusing on lunch, right? So we're giving them meal consultations. We're giving them personalized meal plans. And then we actually serve them their food on a daily basis. And then we tied on some competitors in the industry. And then we discuss the business model, various aspects of the business model. Sorry, please give me, okay. Okay, please give me a minute. Right. So I take on an industry, the industry uh, look statistics. And then we made some sales forecast. Then, uh, right. That we talked of a plan, a plan we have to scale that's uh, in a period of three years. Please give me a minute. Right. In a period of three years, that's how we intend to scale. So we do the funding, total funding that we require for the projects, and then we do that the key areas, of course, that require the funding. And then we add a team, that's the team, and we had a conclusion. So basically, I ended up by saying that anybody interested, any investor interested in investing in our business should contact me through this. Right. So this was it for the pitch. Thank Please, you. That, that last part was very important. If, if you're an um, investor, contact fast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Right. So uh we can go ahead and then give our take on the pitch. If you have any um uh, take, what's your general impression? And yeah, any add up, any addition, subtraction. So we can start with Mr. Crepe and then we'll move to Mr. Lai and any other person. Um so thank you once again. Um so for me, the most um interesting part of you know this presentation and my take home uh, is the power of using a lean uh, approach uh, towards your startup and understanding what we mean by the lean is uh, understanding that you need to take your idea you need to create a small version of this idea into a product mm -hmm. this product you need to test with an assumed target audience and see the reaction Based on this reaction, then you can actually make some, you know, factual projections of okay. what to expect from this business idea. You know, so for example, I, 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 I was having a conversation with a dressmaker and mm -hmm. she said to me, oh, you know, the last time I posted my kids clothes on Instagram, I, I would never go there again. I said, oh, why is that? Because you need to make money from um, social media. She said, oh, I have so many people insulting me. You know, just want to see this. I said, why would they insult you if you just posted a kid's dress? He said, oh, you know, when I posted the dress, I didn't think anybody would mind me. But I went back and I had like many orders. And obviously I was just alone. So I couldn't fulfill these orders, you know. And so people were telling me, you spoiled my daughter's birthday and you're ungrateful and make the good Lord answer you and all these things. You know, so she was scared, like she was having all this negative feedback online. And I said, to her, oh, my God. You have a perfect situation. And I said, let me take time to explain to you the lean methodology of how to approach this. I said, okay, you have a perfect text, uh, a test scenario of how you can leverage from the results that you have, all right? So there's a difference me telling, for example, Mr. Laie, assume Mr. Laie was uh, the investor. I'm like, Mr. Laie, I, I want, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dressmaker. I want to uh, rent a shop on uh, East Lagos High Street. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a high street, I assume that I will get about 30 people walking <laughs> in my shop every week. I yeah. assume that each person will spend maybe 30 Ghana cities per, per dress. Yeah. And so therefore, monthly, I'll be making this amount. And yearly, I'll be bringing you this. And so if you invest this, this is the amount I'm going to bring you. These are all um, unfounded projections. I'm basing it based purely on an idea and an assumption. But if I come to Mr. Lai and I said, Mr. Lai, so I created 
a product because I'm a dressmaker and I created a product for maybe a, ch a child between two to five years and I posted it on social media. Oh mm -hmm. my God, I had 25 people who responded to my post. Out of the 25, 15 people made an order. But Mr. Lai, I could not fulfill my orders and I had so many people insulting me because I only had one person in the shop with me and I was only able to do two dresses, All right? So I believe that based on this evidence, if I was to employ two more people, maybe buy one more machine, mm -hmm. all right? And you know, add more, I don't know, some scissors or something, mm -hmm. I can make, I can get, I believe, and I can, if I do maybe three or more posts per week, I can get, I don't know, 75 people. So I can times it by three, 75 yeah. people who are going to um, you know, respond to my post. And probably I can tell you that 45 of these people will place orders, right? And then if obviously my infrastructure will be in place now, so I should be able to fulfill these orders. So I should be able to give Mr. Laie how much money I can bring him within one month based on an empirical evidence right. of my idea. Right. It's very different from the first pitch I gave him. Okay. You, you know what I mean? So this is my take on the lean methodology today. And I think it's an eye opener. Uh, if you're into business or you're in uh, working for somebody, whatever you're doing, um, wish you luck. But I think this is also something valuable that you can add to your, um, you know, your portfolio uh, or your portmanteau that would really help you to grow in whatever you're doing, uh, particularly even just advising people on starting a business. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. That was impressive. So before I release you, okay. what do you think about the pitch itself? How did the pitch I love, go? I love the pitch. I love the pitch. I'll tell you why. Another, I have so many stories, right? So I, when I started <laughs> Earthling, um, I moved from one hectic job into another hectic job, right? And you know, as you always think, if you're going into a new company, you're thinking, oh, things are going to be a little bit more easier. I'm going to be a bit more relaxed and make more money. It's never the case, right? So my role here was very hectic because I was the only area sales manager for Ghana for over a year and a half. And now we have a second person with us, a female, I love her so much. Um, but my role became so hectic and I, every weekend I was out of Accra, you know, visiting other regions, pushing the agenda and everything like that. So I realized at one point that, okay, Creppy, if you don't sort yourself out, you're going to drop dead. Okay. Because I'll come to work in the morning. By the time I, I blink, it's evening and I have to go home. By this time, I don't feel like eating. Uh -huh. I'll probably have a drink somewhere and I'll eat very late, all right? Okay. So I, I started getting sick. Uh, I started feeling horrible. And you know, I'm in a, a beauty uh, cosmetic industry. So <laughs> sleeping is a very important part of, you know, having a good skin, all right? Exactly. Sleeping is very a very important part of, you know, thinking properly, you know, okay. having a good day and so on and so forth. So. I realized that I was not getting enough sleep. I was not eating well. Everything was basa, 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 as we, speak, we say in our local language, right? So what did okay. I do? I made a decision that, right, four days in a week, and I had to, it's a deliberate decision that I would spend 20 Ghana cities every morning mm -hmm. buying coconut, okay, the water and the inside. I'm going to okay. buy some banana, right? I'm going to buy some granuts, right? Okay. And then I'm going to have some other fruit, like apple, whatever, but it's three different fruits. And I do this judiciously four days a week, every morning. So in the morning, I can spend my 20 Ghana cities buying wache, yeah. buying cookie, buying whatever I want, KFC, whatever. But I want to spend my 20 Ghana cities eating fruits. So I prepare myself for lunch and I don't play with lunch anymore. So when I do this in the morning, when I'm working, I'll be picking on these bananas and drinking my coconut water, having water, lots of water. And I'm going through my day. By the yeah. time I realize it's lunchtime, I have my little lunch and I know I'm good. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Uh -huh. Because if you don't do that, Mr. Lai, just, you know, the end story. <laughs> we, we, know, we all know the end story. <laughs> anyway, you're going to get sick. You're going to get fired or something. And then you'll just uh, take another person who's just going to play your role. I always tell people we work for people because we are playing a role. It's not that serious. You know, okay. it's not like, you're going to kill somebody to take their position or something like that. You're playing a role. So just play your role properly. And then, you know, you shouldn't have any problem with anybody. All right. Great. So that's my take on this question that you gave me. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. So Mr. Alexander, 
right please what's your take on the pitch presentation all right i i think uh the the pitch you you just uh, presented it, it's well structured and i like it but mm -hmm. we are looking for investor for that i must say <laughs> <laughs> But I, 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 need, I need to uh, remind audience that even as we are talking about the lean methodology, we shouldn't always forget that. It's also about, you know, optimizing the, the people you work with, the resources and the efforts and energy and yes, creating yes. values in order to satisfy the customer. So mm -hmm. we don't need to actually um, forget that. So in yes, summary, yes. Um, we got to learn that uh, with the lean methodology, we have the pitch, we have the scalability, and then the business model. Exactly. And inside the business model itself, uh, this is the mistake I realize a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, the marketing aspect of the business model is very important mm -hmm. because if you're an entrepreneur and you have a business idea and you have your business developed, you should mm -hmm. know who are your your uh, your target market. Exactly. Certainly, you can you can uh, push out your your business uh, product to everybody you mm -hmm. need to um to to scale it up mm -hmm. you need to know who your target markets are mm -hmm. and then the second thing you need to also uh, remember is that you need to apply certain principles okay. like uh, uh the place of the business uh the pricing of okay. your products mm -hmm. you know place price and mm -hmm. then uh, promotions Promotion. that yeah. you do that will enable uh, your business idea uh, yeah. to, to sell out very fast and yeah. we also know that, uh, like uh, Mr. Kribi uh, said earlier on, somebody comes and says, Charlie, what is selling fast? I mean, what they go on? I mean, you hear somebody selling tomato, he's bringing profit fast. So you also want to, you know, invest into tomato business and then you get disappointed. But exactly. uh, entrepreneurs should also be very patient because uh, if it's a long-term business, you know that certainly your forecast is going to be long-term. Exactly. If it's a short-term business, so people shouldn't be in a hurry to... to to, to, to gather in their profit, but have patience for the business to, to develop uh, with, with time. So uh, that is what I would say. Uh, thank you so much, Dorothy, for, for inviting me. I really enjoyed uh, the time here with, uh, with the guest. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Kirby, Mr. Michael, all our guests, Mr. Dickman, Joan, God's Grace, SC, Mr. Magnus, Mr. Gabriel, Abla, Rosus, and all of us. It's been great, great, great having you. And I would want to say a very big thank you to God for making it possible for us to have this meeting. I personally have learned so much from, I mean, it's, a lot has gone into preparation in terms of putting the materials together. Yeah, a lot has gone on, you know, behind the scenes. You should have seen me today, a few minutes before you know, coming live, I had a lot to, you know, put together, but I'm grateful that it's all come together. And this has been our very first session. Hopefully we're going to have more. I actually wish you could stay on and on and on and on and just have a good chat. But, you know, time flies. All right. So before we sign out, I want us to take a look at the, the key points or key topics in the presentation. So that as we go back, we know that these are some of the areas that we can reflect on, right? So, um, please give me a minute. Okay, so on applying the lean method, we know that it starts by creating the idea, lean startup method, sorry, we create an idea and a hypothesis, produce, a bit of whatever you want to provide as a minimum viable product. You test the product to a smaller section of your market. And then you have you test the hypothesis, what are your holes or the assumptions you made or you had in mind, does it apply to in the real world? Is it something realistic? And then from that, you answer these questions. If it's not realistic or if it is, you... <clears throat> find ways and means to readjust or find the ideas or the hypothesis. And then when you are good to go, you launch in the market. This way it saves you resources and money and energy. It saves you frustration. I mean, there are people who have abandoned their entrepreneurial journey altogether because they started something that didn't work. 
it may not necessarily be, called, be because the market is bad or there's no market for their products. Or in general, the business is not like the business doesn't really work, but maybe they didn't put things together, they didn't structure themselves, <clears throat> they didn't test their approach to see if it's doable. Okay, so I guess it's very important. Then <clears throat> we talked of the need to have a business pitch, which is very important. And then we also talked of the importance of the business model as it helps you and your invested. So you have a quick idea at a glance of all the relevant areas that you need to take decisions for in the business, even before you start. So that way you save resources. And not only should you have a business model, but you should have a business model that you can scale or grow or that has potential to grow in the future. So then we presented its fit as a presentation by inculcating the, uh, the business model and how we can apply the lean method in there. Right. So it's been an interesting discussion. Before we sign off, let's do a- Hello, and thank you last, for reaching out to be a- Let's play our video for the last, and then we'll get a quick round up of all that there is. But please don't forget that I've left links in the chat session, links to the various resources and a link for the course itself. So I'd encourage all of us to take a look, sign up as Yali uh, members. There's also the Yali Fellowship. The, after that, there's the alumni groups. Yali members are doing so much across the African continent. So it's a good initiative. There's so much to learn. I was really impressed by the, the volume of courses that are you know are made available for free. And I feel that as young people, as Africans who really want to make an impact, we should tap into such opportunities. And they'll go a long way to help us as a people and as the continent in general. Right. So let's do play this video. Hello, and thank you for reaching out to be a part of the African Leaders Initiative. I launched this effort because I believe that the future... I'm oh, sorry. Hello, and thank you for reaching out to be a part of our Young African Leaders Initiative. I launched this effort because I believe that the future of Africa will be defined by extraordinary young people like you. You've shown me that you have the talent, you the drive, and the determination to yes. become um, the next generation of African leaders. Okay. In July 2014, the United States government announced the creation of four regional leadership centers in Accra, Ghana, Dakar, Senegal, Nairobi, Kenya, and Pretoria, South Africa. These centers have gone ahead to serve as regional hubs across the continent to encourage transformational learning and enhance leadership skills. Over the past four years, the four regional leadership centers have trained a total of 14,000 young Africans in civic leadership, public policy, and business and entrepreneurship. Alumni of Yali Africa have gone ahead to advocate for policy change, brought various forms of development to their communities and countries, and started enterprises with which they have created jobs for other young people. With funding from the MacArthur Foundation, Yali Africa will be empowered to continue training more young Africans to bring change in policy advocacy, civic leadership, and business entrepreneurship. Together, Yali Africa and the MacArthur Foundation can combine to impact Africa in the best possible ways to leave an indelible mark in the development of the most promising continent. Great. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Please, if you are still online, thanks for saying that. Hey, hello, Comfort. Thanks for joining. What's up with you? Miss Comfort, can you hear us? You can say yes. Hi. Hi, darling. Comfort. Uh, hi. It's good to have you here. Oh, thanks for joining us. 
you join us just when we are about to sign up. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll make the recording available on other social media platforms so you get to um, watch it later, okay? Right. So at this point, uh, we thank God and thank everybody for making the program possible. Yeah, come for sure. That's fine. Right. So um, please, I'll have your emails. I'll compile them and then put you up on my uh, list so that we would notify you of our next sessions, which I'm praying should come on soon. So once again, thanks for making time. It's been great talking to you. So I want to sign off. If anybody has a last something to add up, please let's do that. If not, then we'll uh, wish you a good night. Enjoy your weekend. So let's wait for a few seconds. If there's nothing to say, then we'll sign off. Thanks, well, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Kripi mm -hmm. for coming. And I also yeah. like to thank the the guests, other guests who were had their time out of their busy schedules to join uh -huh. uh, the program. And uh, I wish that uh, in the next segment, the internet will be more stable exactly. in Ghana. <laughs> 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 so that, you know, the streaming will be much more smoother. And exactly. thank you, the host, uh, for such a, a wonderful time with us. Thank you. My pleasure. Right. So at this point, say enjoy your evening